triple C. I'm gonna make him bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really got the heat. What's up, everybody? Henry Cejudo here, aka Triple C. You guys, welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback, where I am going to be dissecting the one and only Patty the Batty, aka Patty the Fatty. Obviously, we all know he has a fight this weekend, UFC 282. And everybody, everybody wants to know, and everybody wants to have their two takes on him. What makes Patty the Batty dangerous, or is he as good as people think he is, guys? This episode is brought to you by Fruit with 15 servings of fruits and veggies in every bottle. You guys go from fries, Kroger's. You guys go to the pharmacy section and get yourself some. These are the healthiest drinks right now on the market. Anyhow, enough talk. Let's go to the big screen. Okay, so we're gonna start here with none other than Patty the Batty, Cage Wars 96. You know he's gonna be taking on right here the true Viking from Copenhagen, Soran Bach. And again, this is this is a while ago, but still, you know, if if you haven't corrected your tendencies from way back when, I just wonder how good you're gonna be when uh, on, on you know the future fights that you end up having. Anyways, let's hit the play button. Yeah, so look right away, look right away. Patty the Batty's hands are down. His hands are down. Look, look, look at look at how he exposed. Look at how everything centered line, and he's throwing wide. These are the things that you have to watch out about. You know, not bad, not a bad takedown. Goes around the waist, finds finds a way. And, and that's kind of what I see with Patty the Batty. I see more of Patty the Batty as an actual, I see him more of as a grappler. You know, he's a freestyle fighter in my eyes, but he's still a grappler. And I think these are some, these are probably some of his best transitions right here, is the fact that it's his grappling. Yeah, he's a bitch to take the back, but I also want to show you guys this, this little clip, because look at how Look at how he has this choke like sunk in, like literally. I mean, this is first. This is the first minute of the very, very first round. And look at how deep he is, and still didn't have the ability to literally finish this choke. So, you know, you. I don't know if you want to credit this guy on bottom, but whatever it is. I mean, this is this is round one. Had the choke sunk all the way in and couldn't get the finish again head straight through always standing here doesn't move his head he gets hit once and he stays narrow like his pos his head should be click clocking when you get hit you should be here because you got you gotta you gotta switch off to be in that state you can't be a stationary target patty the batty has to be here a little tyson but going backwards but he just stays he just stays in center line there's those are those are three, those are about five punches that got in just that appear undisciplined of him being able to do the right thing. Ooh, caught an elbow there. That was nice from Surenbach. Boom. The last true Viking. Yeah, hands are down. Oh. Guys, I don't. I, no one went to blast. Like, like, yeah, you're off balance. It, it, it was nothing that this man did. It was more of what Patty the Batty ended up doing. So as he was searching, he went for that double leg. He was off balance because he was trying to hook the leg while the power was on this side. Takes your right hand. I mean, nothing really. I mean, nothing really. I hope this guy has gotten better from, from this time, but nothing was really worthwhile. I mean, an easy takedown for Sir and back. And again, guys, this is, this is, okay. I don't know how long this fight is or how long ago it was. Yeah, I'm catching him again. The same thing that I say. When he, whenever he does get hit, he sticks straight forward. And somebody that could really clock in the UFC, he's going to be in trouble. You know, smiling. This is the fifth round, and yet still gets taken down. These are things that you have to be careful with, Patty. Smiling. Gives the grin. And then, and if you're going to play that game, you can't. You got to play the game correctly. You know, you got you got to be able to defend and do all that. Play mind games with him, not the crowd. You, you shouldn't be playing mind games with these guys. Play mind games with him. A guy like Khabib, oh. You know, guys doing the right thing, controlling the wrist. And, you know, this is the fifth round, and he had the real naked choke at the beginning of the fight, and all of a sudden, this is how he ends it. I mean, these are things that you want to ask yourself. Is this guy a really, is this guy a real championship fighter? 
You know, it's a, he's a freestyle. He is a fighter. You do got to give him respect. But this guy is, I don't even know who this guy is. And I'm sure Patty the Batty has gotten better because of it. But he was able to go three rounds. And here we have it. You know, Patty, Patty the Fatty versus David Martinez. Hispanico. Oh, he's, oh, he's Italian. Yeah. Yeah, a little while right away. A little, that's, well, not bad. Something that I will say about Patty the Patty is uh, he will take chances. He will, he, he, he's, he's a freestyle fighter. And when you got a guy that's just a freestyle fighter that wants to do freestyle things, he just predicted goals on the spot that could also make you dangerous. Look at nice uh, Uchimata. The dude kept pressing, got the angle to be able to take him down. And you know, start doing work. Went straight to yeah, went straight to full guard. This guy should have been letting go of this. Start shrimping out. Well, gave him the back. And again, this is where I feel like this is where I feel like Patty the Batty's best position is. His best position is uh is when it ever it is that his transitions kind of like Al Jermaine, like their transitions of uh, of being able to take the back. Yo, this is this is where I do feel, if, and these are positions, whether it's Algerman or anybody, that if they're able to take your back, don't fight these positions. Protect, protect yourself. You lost the round. Don't even try to, don't even attempt to get out. Just be in that position and just uh, stall it out to whenever it is that, uh, you know, the round is over. But this guy decided to fight him. And for that reason, you got to give, you got to give Patty the baddie. Look at that. He's got his signature dance. Yeah, you got to give him his credit. Great back taker. And here we have it. He went up against uh, Kazula. Kazula Vargas. You know, 36 years old. Pretty much, you know, there's a 10 year gap there. Nine, if you want to call it. You know, similar in, uh, in height and a little off in reach. But notice from his first fights to now, like look, look at, look at the distance. Like he's he's playing more of that game, but he still has that habit. He still has that habit of when he gets hit, is the fact that he stays straight forward. It's almost like he's surprised by the punch, and he'll just stay there. You see, he caught he caught him with that second punch. And there's fighters that you know that could catch people with that second punch, or even third punch. Bah. When he catches in, you know, but his instincts were right. Go in, go in for the takedown. Take the fight, try to take his back, do something. But this is where I will give credit. He knows he's probably hurt or whatever. Maybe, you know, allow him to play the ground game a little bit. Sometimes when you play the ground game, you're able to. Oop, Huchimata again. That's one thing that his opponent is going to have to uh, really study. Notice what he does. He feels the pressure. That's the second time he's done it. And we see this video. Yep, he kind of uh, he uh, you probably can't see it from here, but he's probably a little. He, yep, he was already loose off that one leg. So that's all he had to do is just tilt, put all the weight here to eventually you know hip him across for the takedown. Not bad, man. Patty the Batty, not bad at all. Yep, there it is. That's the transition that I'm talking about. As soon as he makes that transition, he knows he knows where he's good at. So even from the first fight that we saw, we had it always sunk in till now. He just knows what is it that he has to crawl up and start looking for things. Yep, right away. This was key right here, because now he's above the hips. Now he's above the hips. Yep, beautiful triangle here. Yep. He's squeezing. He's gotten better from the left. From, his, from one of his recent fights at Cage Warriors to now, he's gotten better at these positions. And yeah, now he's going for broke. Now he's gonna, now he's gonna squeeze the crap out of this man. And that was that. Patty the Batty. You got, you see Dana White happy. You know, you got Eddie Hearn over here. Like he's doing his thing. Yup, look at the transition. This man, it's, you're better off going to your back then staying in these all four positions, you know, tripod position. And that was it. I like, I like how he went to his face to get his, uh, his chin to open up and the two eventually go. 
Okay, look, 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 look. Go back. Look, look, look at how he's cross face him in the face. And, then, and yeah, you see that? And he's cross. He almost turns it into a neck crank first. He gets the dude to kind of he gets him to prop up to eventually sink in that arm for the tap. Yep, and there we have it. Oh, we got Molly. We got Molly in the house. What up? Yeah, that's cool what these guys have been able to do, man. Like like the friendship that they have. I think I think it's extremely special. I think it is special. I think they both uh, uh, strive off of each other. But we all saw Molly's last fight, you know. People get exposed, man. If you have a hole in MMA, once you start fighting tougher competition, these are the things that, tep that typically tend to happen. But, uh... You know, they're celebrating left and right over here. So what else can I say? I think uh, as much as I give Conor McGregor a bunch of stuff, um, Conor McGregor is just, his skill set is a whole lot better than this guy. You know, this guy probably has a better ground game, but you're gonna have to take McGregor down f first. And I don't think McGregor will really give up his back. I think McGregor is super smart with at least throwing elbows. While well, we saw with Chad Bendis in those fights, pretty, pretty impressive off of being taken down on bottom. But, you know, that's that's Patty the Batty for you guys. And now I would like to take it to the three T's, what I call the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. Let's go. So the techniques, the tactics, and the threshold. I tell you what, guys, for as much crap as I talk about Conor McGregor, the only thing that these guys have in common is that they're, the fact that they're probably next door neighbors. You know what I mean? Like one of them's from England, the other one's from, from Ireland. But I don't see, I don't, I, I like Patty the Bad. I think he brings a lot of publicity to the UFC, but I just he's not at that level. We gotta forget. We can't forget too that Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor at the time where he was at his height, he was able to beat some pretty big names, and uh, he was able to do some specialties. Obviously, becoming a two division world champ. But for Patty the Batty, um, it is yet to be known. You know, Conor McGregor. I think I believe his first or second fight in the UFC here, he had fought a Max Holloway and beat him. So that says a lot about Conor McGregor. So going back to Patty the Batty, let's start off with another than, uh, than the technique. We'll start off here, the technique. Uh, how is it that I would grade him? I think Patty the Batty, I think, uh, I think his greatest asset is his back taking. I see him more of as a, as a freestyle fighter. I think, but, but I also think there's a lot of things and a lot of improvements that Patty the Batty needs to make in order for him to become the best fighter that he could become. So for the technique, for Patty the Batty, if I was to grade him, I'm probably gonna have to give him a six. You know, a six just because of the way he throws his punches, the fact that he can't he can't put his head offline, um, just kind of will get taken down at will sometimes. We'll go, you know, and uh, for, for that reason, man, I just think of a six. For the tactics. For Patty the Batty, um, for the tactics, it's not bad, man, because sometimes Patty will play the ground game. He literally will go on bottom. As we saw against uh, Vargas, the Mexican, he uh, he got hit. He ended up playing guard. And uh, when the guy's a gamer like that, like it's uh, it's pretty cool, man. If there's one thing that he's probably pretty, he's probably the best at, it's probably gonna be right here. But I'm still gonna have to give him a 6.5, you know, because that's just how I feel, guys. I don't know. You guys shoot me. But I will say that this right here, his tackle game is his greatest gift because he knows when it, he, he understands the competition, the game of the fight. Uh, the threshold, this is the one that really scares me with him on the fifth, you know, the smiling, getting taken down, and in that fifth round uh, through being ground and pound. Like sometimes when you have so much success in the, in the beginnings of the round, it makes it, it, makes it that much, uh, it makes it that much harder for you to really understand what is it to train for a five round fight. So for his threshold, I'm probably gonna have to give him a five. And again, guys, I'm not being a hater. I'm just, you know, stating facts because I don't know much about the guy. <clears throat> I don't know much about the guy, but what I could see, this is what I could see. <clears throat> so it's 12, so 17. So this is the final score for Patty the Batty. He's got a 17.5 out of 30. So that is my break breakdown for Patty the Batty. I'm going to give him 
a 17.5 out of 30. You guys shoot me if you guys don't like me, but that's just how I feel. Uh, I'm here to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, But the good thing about Patty the Batty is there's rooms of improvement. I think he starts fighting high, uh, high caliber opponents, and the, you know this, this RPA will definitely go up. But as of right now, Triple C has him at 17.5 out of 30. And again, this, is, this isn't always a knock because there's, an, there's so much opportunity for him to go up and actually get better. Guys, this episode is brought to you by the one and only Fru with 15 servings of fruits and veggies in every bottle. Guys, I'm down 15 pounds. I'm getting ready for my, I'm getting ready for my fight on March 5th. And, uh, you know, I trust in Fru and so should you. So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdowns, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out!